<laughs> and I appeared in this program because I inexplicably came out in a list of the 100 greatest comedians of all time as number 41. And no one was more surprised than my mother, who is basically embarrassed and ashamed by what I do. She, uh, <laughs> me being 41 in a list of comedians, for her that's a bit like if I'd appeared in a list of the 100 tallest dwarves. <laughs> Taller than many other dwarves, admittedly, but still essentially a dwarf. <laughs> and as such, unable to apply for any job with a minimum height requirement, <laughs> such as basketball player, policeman, or owner operator of an enchanted beanstalk. <laughs> the problem with my mother when it comes to stand up comedy is she's already seen the funniest comedian she's ever going to see. She always goes on about him, and it wasn't me. It was Tom O'Connor, the host of the 1980s quiz game, Name That Tune. And my mother saw Tom O'Connor doing stand-up on a cruise which she took ten years ago when she retired. And that had always been a dream of hers, um, to go on a cruise, not to see Tom O'Connor doing stand-up on a cruise. <laughs> Seeing Tom O'Connor do stand-up on a cruise is not even a dream of Tom O'Connor's. <laughs> in fact, it's his worst nightmare. <laughs> and one which he has now been trapped in for ten years. <laughs> like some kind of laughing scouse groundhog. <laughs> in fact, Tom O'Connor's been doing stand-up on cruises for so long now that he has developed scurvy. <laughs> But it was the funniest thing she's ever seen. He was an amazing Stu, Tom O'Connor, she says. He came out, Tom O'Connor, and he said to a man in the audience, he said to him, what do you do for a living? And the man said, I uh, work for Shell or something in finance. And Tom O'Connor said, are oh, you a sardine? Now that's not it, Stu. What, that's wrong. What happened was, he came out, Tom O'Connor, and he said to a man in the audience, what do you do for a living? And the man said, I'm in oil. And Tom O'Connor said, are oh, you a sardine? It was hilarious, Stu. <laughs> And he said to a man in the audience, what do you do for a living? And the man said, I'm in oil. And Tom O'Connor, he was fast, Stu, like lightning, out of a gun. He said to him, are you a sardine? He wasn't a sardine, he was a man. <laughs> but he said to him, are you a sardine? To make it funny. Because otherwise, if, he, if he'd said to him, you're a man, it would have just been an observation of fact. <laughs> he wasn't a, if he had been a sardine, it would have been amazing. But he came out, Stu. <laughs> It was, it was hilarious. And he said to him, what do you do for a living? And the man said, I'm in oil. And he said, are you a sardine? It, was pretty, it doesn't strictly make... What he meant was because the sardines, Stu, when they're tinned, they're served in... They come in oil, in the tin. So he said, are you a sardine? He could have... If the man had said, I'm in mustard sauce, you know, like if he'd worked for Coleman's or something, he could still have said, are you a sardine? But people wouldn't automatically have connected it with the tin storage for sardines. <laughs> there would have been a pause, people looking around, then they'd have got it and laughed, but not as hard. It was amazing, Stu, he came out and he said to him, what do you do for a living? And the man said, I'm in oil. And he said, oh, are you a sardine? It was, it was quick, Stu, quick. But it doesn't matter, because the sardines, they're, they're in that, it's not their job being in oil. That's just how they're tinned for storage, when they're dead. So it would only have made sense if he said to him, how will you be stored when you're dead? And he was a sardine, and he'd said, in oil. And he could have said, are oh, you a sardine? It's like if you said to a man, what do you do for a living? And the man replied, I'm in a coffin. That wouldn't make... It's not strictly speaking true. But all the same, it was hilarious, Stu. He came out, and he said... He was fast, he was quick, off the bullet, he was like a bullet out of a hole. He said to him, what do you do for a living? And the man said, I'm in oil. And he said, are oh, you a sardine? It was amazing. It was better than you. It was amazing. He said, what do you do for a living? And the man said, I'm in oil. And he said, are oh, you a sardine? He wasn't a sardine. He was a man. But he said he was a sardine. Are you a sardine? It was amazing. Are you a sardine? He came out, Stu. <laughs> said to the man, what do you do for a living? And the man said, I'm in oil. Tom O'Connor, from Name That Tune, he said, are you a sergeant? He was in the like, hilarious.
Because what my mother doesn't realise is that since the nervous breakdown Tom O'Connor suffered in the late 80s after being outed by the tabloids for having an affair with a teenage prostitute, he has answered every question put to him with the phrase, are you a sardine? And like a stopped clock, which is right twice a day, inevitably, at some point in his life, Tom O'Connor is going to be right to give that answer. <laughs> the first time that happened was when he was on the cruise, and the man said, I'm in oil. And Tom O'Connor said, are you a sardine? And the second was when the O'Connors, uh, Tom O'Connor and Mrs. Tom O'Connor, had gone... Uh, on holiday uh, after the scandal to try and patch up their marriage and they went to Portugal, to Lisbon uh, in June and a small oily fish came up to Tom O'Connor in the street <laughs> and it declared to him I am the traditional street festival snack of choice <laughs> in Lisbon, every year, on the festival of St. Anthony, June the 13th. But I'm also a popular summer snack throughout Portugal, generally. <laughs> Tom O'Connor said, are you a sardine? <laughs> <laughs>